start saving money by putting a penny in uh, the piggy bank. Then doubling the amount you save each week is the question to find how much Yogi will save in eight weeks. Well, notice Yogi is saving, uh, they're doubling the amount they save each week, right? So for week two, how much will they put into the bank? Four, Four cents. Eight. Week three, eight cents. Four, 16 cents. 32 cents. And finally, 64 cents. Now what we need to do is figure out the total amount of savings in the piggy bank, right? So three, we're going to add the four cents, which would mean he has seven cents. Plus the eight cents, we can give him a 15 cents. Plus the 16, it'd be a 31 cents. And then 63 cents. And then 127 cents. Bank would be 2 to the power of 8, which is what? 256, right? That's how much you would put into the bank. Well, notice we're just adding the adding that to the box that's just diagonally down to the left from this one. So, and that's one less than it, so I'm just going to add 255. And that would tell me how much this person would have at the bank. So, that's so one is a 511 cents. Well, let's just continue the table then. So, in week seven, it'd have 128. Week 8 would be uh, 256, which is what we found. And uh, 512, very good. And uh, yeah, 1,024, very good. 2,048, or 4,096. Okay? Well, another way we can look at this, again, is just this... Value is just one less than this one, so I just 255. So it would be 13 weeks. So 511. It would take uh, 10, 23, 20, 47, 40, 95. So this right here would be uh, so 109 or 18. Well, there's $81.91. How many weeks will it take to save 80 bucks? About 12. 12. 12 weeks. So, yeah, this is going to take 12 weeks. All right, so this first problem, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to solve it uh, by just placing the values of R and S into this expression, all right? So notice we have r is minus, and then we got to the power of three and two, okay? So the value of r is what? It's negative three, right? So this r as well is negative three, and s here is negative four. Okay, so let's look at this. You got negative three minus negative four to the power of three plus negative three to the power of two, okay? Well, negative three, this actually is gonna end up being a plus. The answer is 10. Negative three plus four is what? One to the power of three plus negative three squared. Since it's negative three times negative three, there's So what's one? One to the power of three is just one times one times one which is one. Then we're gonna add this, this is negative three times negative three, all right? Which is? Negative nine. Good old nine. Positive nine, because there are two negatives. It's a positive nine, because there are two negatives. Okay, so the answer to this is 10. No fancy stuff? Apparently not. All right, this next one, and this is nice about part of this homework assignment, is you do not have to solve this. 
All this wants you to do is write this using exponents. Okay. So let's look at the different quantities that we have. We've got a 3, a 5, and a Q. These are all multiplied together. How many threes do we have? I want to write two. two. I want to do this. How many fives? One. One. How many Qs? You don't have to write three. one, do you? <clears throat> no, not necessarily. But uh, technically, that would be correct. No. Uh, now, the thing is, in this, uh, because this is powers, <clears throat> these are all being multiplied together. That's why these are like three to the power of two. Okay, and 5 to the power of 1. You've got 1, 5 being multiplied by the other stuff. And you've got 3 Qs being mul multiplied together. Okay, now this next one, this fraction stuff actually is a big deal, right? Because most of you are going to do this and some of you will do it wrong. Okay, let me show you what you guys, this is one of the big mistakes that a lot of people make when doing this, okay? Is you'll do, oh, this just means that it's, this, okay? No. So 5 to the power of 3 is a 125 sevenths, Mr. Cell. This is my answer. This right here is incorrect. Alright. Very good. Okay, so what this actually is, and Seth just said it, or someone over there said it. Okay, this is 5 sevenths times 5 sevenths times five sevenths. What if it's inside Okay. Then it's different. Then you do it to whichever one it's applied to. All right, so that's good. Do you guys remember how to multiply fractions here? Yeah. You just multiply the numbers straight across, right? Yeah, pretty simple. So as it turns out, and we can look at it like this as well, okay? So if we see this, we have five over seven, correct? How many fives do we have being multiplied together? Three. How many sevens are being multiplied together? Three. So five to the power of three is one twenty-five. Seven to the power of three is. I don't know what it is. Seven. Forty-nine times seven. Two hundred eighty-seven. Two hundred eighty-seven. Yeah. Is that right? I added them. Three hundred forty-three. Thank you. All right. So this would be the actual answer. Be reduced? No. Now the idea behind this problem, we'll, we'll show you guys in a, well, so here's the thing is, is when you guys see an example like this, you'll see the parentheses for the fraction, so give me some numbers, two, Ten and five. two and Nine. five is good, Twenty-one. and uh, not quite that high, five. Uh, sure five, three. okay, yeah. not five and three. Okay. Now, two fifths times two fifths times two fifths, as some of you can tell. So let's let's write this out. All right. So oh, this there is five. Okay. So on the top, we've only got twos being multiplied together, and the bottom fives. But how many of each is there? Five of them. Okay. So some of you will notice when you see something like this, you can simplify it immediately. All right. So let's look at another example, something like uh, 3 fourths to the 10th power, okay? If you saw something like this, you could just figure out 3 to the power of 10 divided by 4 to the power of 10, okay? In other words, the 10 is distributed essentially to both Wait, so we don't the numerator and denominator. Uh, no, you do not. And here's these the answers. Test? Here's how this looks. All right, so give me a number. Ten. Three. Sure, ten and three. No, it okay. shows you the number. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, eventually it might get too big. All right. This is the way this exponent stuff will work. Just so you guys understand the terminology, so when we go over it, this big number right here is called the base number. Okay. Three right up and count. This is considered the exponent. Oh, yeah, I think it didn't work because I have a dot. It doesn't last number. Other people call this uh, the power. 
Okay. You can call both if you want. So this is the whole terminology of it. Uh, let's look at this one. So now we've got some negatives involved, correct? Yeah. Well, that's fine. Again, we're just going to write this using exponents. So what two quantities am I dealing with? What two terms? Negative two. Yeah, you've got negative two and three. Well, how many negative twos do you have? Three. Three of them. How many threes do you have? Four. Four, done. That's it. Uh, the nice thing about this, too, is they're going to be using letters. Because letters are so much fun. Okay? So what two quantities are we dealing with in the second example? A and P. A and P. Okay? P. That's what I said, P. That's what you said. Oh. All right, how many A's are there? Two. How many B's? Three. Four. Done. For example, this is a to the power of 2 times b to the power of 3. Other people will say it a squared times b cubed. Okay? Right. That's, that's, be, that's why we do math, to make it sound more complicated. Okay? You guys, okay? A is because you guys look at a and think to yourself, self, this is really easy. And this is what, you, this is what most of you wrote, okay? As far as I can tell. Most of you wrote something like one half power I put parentheses, four. though. Okay. I put parentheses. If you write this on the test, it's wrong. But, yeah, let me, let me show you guys why this is wrong. Okay. And this, this goes back to uh, Seth's question, I think it was. Okay. What this means is you have one times one times one times one divided by two. Okay. What you will need that set of parentheses yes. to show that you're multiplying one half four to the third times five to the second this is correct oh, there's only two fives five squares good all right don't don't say it like that Kate you're gonna get stuff wrong all right, M and N. How many M's? M times N squared. Yeah, there's two N's. Very good. This one, how many times do we multiply four by itself here? Four. Four times, okay. And you get 256. So this is 256. What about E? 2 to the power of 6. All right, well, that's a good question. All right, so some of you are saying 64, right? Why is this not negative then? Cambria. Excellent. How many of you did not hear what she said? You guys are sitting right next to me. She whispers. No, I heard her very... She yelled it. <laughs> Camry, do you want to say it louder? There's an even number of negative signs. There you go. Woo, go Camry! Oh, yeah. Thank you, Cambria. Since there are an even number of negatives, even number of negatives gives you a positive answer, okay? So as it turns out, 64 is the answer. What about F? What did you guys get? Keep this as a fraction, okay? 1 over 125. Can I simplify that any further? No. No, I would. All right, this is nice. This is one of those word problems, okay? The deck of a skateboard has an area of about 2 to the power of 5 times 7 square inches. <laughs> I found it, Mr. Sorrow. Okay, this, is how, this is actually the way they measure them at the factory. Okay. What is the area of the skateboard deck? A lot. About 2 to the power of 5. Times square inches. 2 to the power of 5 is? 32 times 7. 224. There you go. 20, 24 
Less than if you don't if you don't label this one, it's wrong. Okay. Very good. Four thousand two hundred is four thousand two hundred is incorrect. Very good. Some of you did. Listen, there's a couple different ways you can show square feet or cubic feet or whatever. This is one way. Other people would show it uh, like this. Both of these work. Okay, here we go. Let's do this one, all right? So, you guys, let's do uh, 22 to the power of 2, okay? You could do 22 times two, 22, but in the calculator like Olivia just showed you, what you can do is you're going to push 2, and then 2. That will give you 22. Then you're going to push, this is what we call a carrot. It's giving me a different answer, Carrot. Yeah. It's giving me a different answer. Yeah. 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 So power of two. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're gonna push equals. Some of you it says enter. Four hundred and eighty-four. And it will show you that the answer is four hundred and eighty-four. Four hundred and eighty-four. What about three thousand? Well well just so you guys know how to put it in the calculator, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna, you're gonna push five. Then your carrot, or carrot, two, four. Now the problem with this is, like, like I was talking to you guys before about, if the number's too big, it's going to put it in scientific notation, which is what it's done. Uh, this actually may be considered E notation, which we will go over later. So the book will not give you very high numbers for exponents. What this does, you got to do the parentheses first, so this would give you 14. So you got 729 minus the 14. That's why that's 715, okay? Uh, there we go.